I want to read to you a couple sections out of Joseph Plum Martin's memoirs. Joseph Plum Martin was a, uh, a Revolutionary War soldier, and after the war, he wrote a very detailed memoir that has a lot of uh, description about his food and eating while he was a soldier. Here's that first section. So this is from the campaign of 1776. He says, we found our invalids consisting of the sick and the lame and the lazy. Uh, they had obtained some fresh beef. Where the commissioners found the beef or the men found the commissioners in this time of confusion, I do not know, nor did I stop to ask. They were broiling the meat on small sticks, Indian style, around blazing fires made of dry chestnut rails. The meat, when cooked, was as black as coal on the outside and as raw on the inside as if it had not been near the fire. I asked no questions for conscience sake, but fell to and helped myself to a feast of this raw beef without salt or bread. That's a, an amazing little piece, amazing little story uh, that he gives us. And, you know, that, that leads me to talking about raw beef. Soldiers' rations were uh, very typically or supposed to be a pound of meat a day. Uh, many times, or most of the times, that was listed as either fresh beef or uh, pork, and they probably meant salt pork at the time, but fresh beef, not salt beef or corned beef or other uh, kinds of beef, but fresh fresh beef. And uh, most of the references that Joseph Plum Martin actually gives in his book about uh, his rations, most of the time the meat he had was fresh beef, although he always complained about it being underweight. It was supposed to be a pound, and he says rarely a pound. Um, and that it was half bones. Well, here's our uh, beef ration today. We've got some nice fresh beef. Uh, this looks really good compared to an 18th century beef. He was always complaining that it was very lean, uh, that in fact, that sometimes it was transparent. But today uh, we're going to cook some of this up. We're gonna cut it into little nuggets and cook it on the fire with some nice fresh sticks. Josh has prepared these sticks uh, so that we can start getting our meat cooked over the fire. So while Josh is tending to the meat over the fire, let me read you this uh, second excerpt. This is a very interesting piece. I like this. He says, we drew a day's ration of beef and flour. This uh, was called a pound of each. The flour perhaps was not far from its nominal weight, but the beef was as it always was in such cases, and indeed in all the others in the army, not more than three quarters of a pound. And that at best half bone. And how was it cooked? He says, why, as it was usually as when we had no cooking utensils with us, that is, the flour was laid upon a flat rock and mixed up with cold water and then daubed upon a flat stone and scorched on one side while the beef was broiling in the fire on a stick. And this was the common way of cookery when on marches. And we could get anything to cook, that is. And that is the mode that we used at this time. This was the campaign of 1777. So there you have a very, very simple, what, what's it like when you're on the march and you don't have any cooking utensils and you have to cook up your food. So this may sound familiar to you. Uh, we've done ash cakes and fire cakes in a couple of different episodes, but in this one, he talks about actually cooking them on a flat stone. So that's what we're gonna try today. Well, I took part of our uh, flour ration and I just mixed it with water. I don't have anything else. Uh, they weren't, uh, he wasn't issued anything but just straight flour. So we're just going to mix it up and make a nice uh, soft paste. And our big rock here is nice and flat. And we'll just try cooking it on that. Uh, cakes like this are, are very challenging on a rock. The rock was very hot, so uh, when I put the, the flour on it, it kind of stuck right to it. But that gives me the ability to uh, 
to move this rock up into position so that they can get heat on the top side. But you gotta be really careful. This hot, this rock is extremely hot and uh, it's very difficult, it's very heavy. So you don't wanna hurt yourself if you're trying something like this. Well, here is our uh, cooked up meat. Josh did a great job on the, the meat pieces and uh, the, uh, the bread pieces. Well, we'll see how that turns out. They were a little challenging to get off that rock, you could see, but uh, they, look, they look good. So let's give this a chance. Let's give it a try. Oh, I want to try this is cooked exactly like they would have done that in the 18th century. What do you think about that rock cake? Uh, That's rock cake. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so the bread, that's a bit challenging and you really have to, well, hope your rock is clean. You don't get too many um, bits of rock dust rock in <laughs> And without any salt, these are very plain. Oh yeah. But, you know, if you take them off before they're hard and black like this, they're, they're not bad. I'm gonna try out one of these pieces of meat. It looks great. And, mm. It's very good. You mm. almost wish you were back there in the 18th century so you could try out some of Joseph Plum Martin's cooked meat over the fire. It could be worse, let me tell you. Oh yeah. This is great stuff. What you really need to have with this is, is the, the fat and the meat that, that gives a little bit of flavor to the flour because otherwise it's, the flour is really rough. But together, it's, it's pretty good. You can make right. it on this. And you can imagine how much better it would be with salt He's always oh, yeah. complaining that he doesn't have salt. enough salt. Um, he's constantly complaining he doesn't have any sauce. So he probably oh, yeah. means vegetables or anything else to go with it. Like any type of sauce would have yeah. really help push this up a, a whole lot. And it's pretty good to begin with. Right. 